Hi everyone, welcome to Gundam Time. My name is Andrea, and for this video I'm doing an Idle Planet Minor Beginner's Guide. Um, I've been requested it a couple times, and um, it's just, uh, I don't know, this is the game I've been playing the most lately. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys right off the bat that if you are hoping for a fast game that will go for a long, like that will, you'll just charge through it and just accelerate and pass it off within a few days or even a couple months. Um, you're going to be disappointed with this game. This game is an idle game. It is a true idle game and it takes a long time to make progress. But that's why I enjoy it and that's why I'm still playing it where I'm not playing many other games at all right now because I can sit here and be working and I'm like my planet, my little, um, sorry, my little galaxy is running right next to me and all it has to do is just sit there and it does its thing. Anyway, so I wanted to do a, a beginner's guide because this game is very complex. I, it looks, it seems fairly simple. You know, you you um, unlock planets, you upgrade them, you mine them, you build stuff. It seems pretty simple, but there is a lot about it and it's easy to make mistakes that you might end up regretting. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go over things. You see these planets here? We've got planets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. This is your happy spot um, for a large portion of the game. Let me just show you really fast. Uh, oh, you know what? It's not letting me. There we go. Past galaxies. And it's kind of stuck right here. I don't know why it doesn't go past this. It's We're like in June right now of 2024, um, a whole month after this one right here. But, I mean, look at this. Like 12.9 or, yeah, 12.9, 23, 13, 114, 25, 12. So I regularly, even still, actually, um... I'll explain a little bit, but I regularly used to sell right around the, uh, below the 100 million mark for sure, but around the 12.5 and 13 million mark. And, <clears throat> and you're going to want to stick around to that. The game encourages you to sell your first galaxy after about 12 million, um, after it's reached 12 million. But, uh, and that's, that's trying to encourage you to, to get into a habit of doing that. And that is wise. And the reason for that is because every time you sell your galaxy, you get something known as credits. So the galaxy value base reward that right there is for those of you who are just starting. That's basically what you're going to get right there. A lounge is something you can upgrade into. Exodus is something you can buy. The space station is something that happens a little bit while later, right? And so that's my total reward. So every time you sell your galaxy, you get credits. And those credits go into purchase mothership rooms. So you click on new room and it'll select, it'll show you um, the room that you can buy. They start fairly cheap in the beginning. And then once you get up farther, they get pretty expensive. I have not built this one yet because I don't care about it currently. And I'll explain why later. So... Um, but the most important rooms for you to get and for you to work towards are, um, there's a, there's several in here that I think are important. Engineering, I think is important. And, um, and of course, you know, if you upgrade your engineering, you're going to want to upgrade your aeronautical or your packaging. Engineering is basically your mine rate. And then these are the same thing, basically. So one is your ship speed and one is your cargo. Cargo is how much you take off of the planet at a time, and the ship speed is how fast you do it. And they both do basically the same thing, which is kind of nice because then you upgrade your mine once, and you don't have to upgrade both of these. You can upgrade them one at a time. Okay, forge is is um, important and workshop is important. This upgrades smelt and craft speeds, and I'll go. I'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, but. Um, Okay, so your plant upgrade prices is important. Um, which one is I'm looking in here for? Um, lounge lounge is where you get this right here. So it tells you that the lounge comes later in game um, when you click on the information, if I remember right. Let's see. Yes, earn later in game by selling galaxies. Yes, so it comes up uh, eventually. Um, robotics is good. You want to upgrade your robotics to so at least level 4. Where is it in here? Underforge, right here. Underforge and dorms. These two right here are, are important. You want to max them out as fast as you can. And the maximum level is level 11, as you can see, because this will make the game go faster, these two right here. The next important thing is the classroom right here. And that those are your managers. Managers are really important. Um, I, I value that one a lot. And... <clears throat> This one's important for tournaments, but I don't worry about it yet. I'm not huge into tournaments yet, though a lot of people, like if you're super competitive, tournaments are important, but if you just want to play the game just to play the game, then they it might not ever become super important for you. Max idle time is not important to me. Rover scan time is important because it starts to give you bigger bonuses once you hit level four, 
and um, and higher you get much better bonuses. I like the lounge because I like to get more credits every time I sell. So I think that was important. I haven't put a lot into colonization. I'll tell you guys a little bit again later. Project, project research prices, I'll tell you what projects are, but they're down there. And those, that's that's something you'll want to max out eventually. And then you'll be spending, uh, once you max out your, for, um, not your forge, your um, under forge and dorms, then you'll come and you'll start spending more money on these two right here. And these ones, you can upgrade them, I think, to level 50 is what their max is. I can't remember. But anyway, so every time you sell your galaxy, you get credits. You can put the credits towards buying a new room or upgrading an existing room in your mothership. This is your mothership right here. Um, and, okay, so that is that is the basic premise of the game is sell your, sell your galaxy to upgrade your mothership so that you can get faster at selling your galaxy the next time and faster at getting your value here. If you want to see what your galaxy's value is, you come into here and show galaxy value. I like having it visible just because it's important. Now, there are several things you can spend money on in the game. You can spend money on these things down here. I don't recommend them. It's They're very expensive. I just don't think they're worth it. Um, excuse me. I have purchased pretty much everything in the game outside of this. I've never spent money on these. I have purchased all of the ships and I've purchased this. This right here is the one I think is the biggest benefit to <clears throat> uh, biggest bang for your buck. I do recommend people buying the remove ads and this game. I said it in my last idle, idle, um, planet miner game, this remove ads option is the best value for a game I have ever seen. It removes ads and it still gives you everything that the ads give you. So I can come in here. I can still claim the money that they would offer and it still gives me um, dark matter, which I'll tell you what dark matter is in a little bit. You probably already know what it is. Anyway, so it's a very, very beneficial way to spend your money. There are other ways to spend money and those are these ships right here. Merchant ship, daughter ship, Aurora ship, Exodus, Enigma, Thunder Horse. Um, I I bought all of them. I found I have found all of them to be valuable. A lot of people will tell you one is more important than another. Exodus is one of my favorite ones um, because it gives me more credits. So that's where this bonus right here comes in. Look at that's a big bonus, right? Anyway, um, I find them all to be valuable, and I will do future videos on them each specifically, so you guys can have breakdowns on them. Okay, so these are their planets. This right here is your um, station, and it comes as you participate in tournaments. Now, the tournaments are th is this part right here, and tournaments are um, they're you know they're fun. They go for about forty eight hours, and you're competing against real people for them. Though I think I've seen some some people say somewhere that some of them are bots, but I don't I don't believe that. I think that they're all real people, and you basically compete to see who does the best. And there are several different. Um, um, levels and I haven't participated too much in there. The first time I did copper, I like pretty much smashed it. I felt really bad um, because of um, I was too high level for that. So I'm now in gold and I'll, I'm going to go ahead and see how I do in gold and then see how I do in platinum. We'll see. I don't know. I might not make it to platinum. I'm, I am currently mid-level in the game, mid-game. And I'll explain how I know that in a little bit. So those are tournaments right here. You've got challenges. Challenges happen um, about twice a week. And they're very beneficial. I recommend you do them as often as you can. Because it'll help you, you increase in the game. The reason it helps you increase is because it gives you dark matter. Which is the main game currency outside of um, credits. And stars which is another big important thing in the game stars apply to the things that you are mining off of your planets and they apply to the things that you make from your planets um and then here's the rover the rover goes out and scans planets and it brings back rewards and dark matter that thing right there is um this stuff up here and you use dark matter to buy boosts and to buy managers and i'll talk about those in just a minute right here you've got your current market i don't worry about the market unless i'm participating in a tournament it's just not applicable really when you're just selling your galaxy over and over at 12.5 million um, the market basically increases your odds of having a better price on things that you sell Okay, check. This is your daily tasks. Um, I don't understand why the checkboard includes this right here. Like, look at this. Upgrade any mothership room to level 35. I'm not going to do that every day. And I'm not going to do the next level up, you know, to level 40 um, 
in the next day. I, I just, I think this is a stupid thing to have under daily tasks. It should be under the trophy thing right here, which is achievements. And this is uh, following you across a large time in the game. It's not something you're going to do every single day. I mean, this right here, but you know, anyway, you don't do that part every day. That's how many times you've completed your daily task, which isn't very often for me because I don't frequently upgrade mothership rooms. Okay, is that everything? Oh, yeah, so the, right here is the 1.2 mind boost, which happens when you pay for the ads-free version. You get an automatic 1.2 mind boost, which is pretty awesome. Um, and I've already showed you guys this right here, but um, okay, I'll, I'll go over that in a little while. Okay, down along the bottom is this. these things right here. These are really important. Uh, before I get into those, every now and then you will have asteroids land near your mothership. And you can tap on them and it mines them and you get things from them. Later on in the game, you will get better things from them. And then later on, even further, even better things. Okay, down here at the bottom right, you start off. These are the things that you're mining from each planet. Each planet has a specific thing that it mines, that you mine off of it. And um, it um, shows up down here how much you've mined total. I keep mine set at 90% at all times just because I'm lazy and I hate having to reset it around 90%. When you first start out the game, let me just show you since I'm not doing anything with this guy right here. When you first start out the game, you've got it on all or this option right here where you can kind of sell like a portion of them that comes in. And either you turn that off or you, you, you can keep it down at zero and you hit sell um, or you, um, keep it, you know, you can change this toggle around a little bit to sell a little bit more after you've sold a, a few galaxies. I can't remember if it's like six or seven or something like that. Then you have the option to sell an incoming percentage, which is really helpful. Um, it's so annoying to have to go through and, and sell everything and sell percentages, you know, automatically, I mean, by manually. So this is set to automatic. It's really helpful. And, um, Okay, so when you take when you get these these items in here, the ores, you can actually build things here, smelt things into um, into bars. Okay, so this is a copper bar. This is an iron bar. You come down here, you select recipe, and you can unlock the copper bars automatically unlocked once you unlock the ability to do this. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then it, you have to pay money to unlock further op um, options. So I can unlock a whole bunch of these right now. But it doesn't matter. I don't have the the capacity to do anything beyond this because that's as far as up as I have gotten in my planets. The more planets you upgrade, um, unlock, sorry, and start upgrading, the better um, ores you get and the better alloys. Once you upgrade or once you unlock them, then it pops up over here. See, I just unlocked aluminum, silver, gold, bronze, steel, and platinum. Okay, so you take ores and you build alloys with them, the bars, and then you take the bars and you build um, items. And the items is where the money's at. This is the, how you get a whole lot of money in the game to be able to unlock more planets and upgrade more planets. Um, ores is your staple, especially in the beginning, but eventually you'll get to the point where you're going to be wanting to spend or, or create items to sell because that's where you're going to get a lot of money. I do sometimes sell or ally, alloys, but not very often anymore because I'm at the point now where it's just more valuable for me to sell items. And when I'm just doing the quick um, sell after 12.5 or, you know, or 100, 200, 300 million um, credits or whatever, sorry, of, of, of Galaxy Worth, sorry, so I started my way through that. Um, I don't care. I don't worry about selling items just because it doesn't matter. It um, Keeping them doesn't, um, sorry, selling them does not increase your Galaxy value. Uh, if you have a whole lot of money versus a whole lot of um, items, then they both contribute equally to your galaxy value, meaning selling a whole bunch of stuff and getting a whole bunch of cash isn't going to increase your galaxy value. So it doesn't it doesn't matter whether I leave them in here or whether I sell them. It's still contributing to my my value. OK, so ores make alloys, alloys make items and items is how you get a lot of money. Now down here is how you smelt and craft things. When you first start out, it's quite expensive to start um, doing things down here. Um, yep, I've got some of those. It's quite expensive to to start building and crafting stuff. But as you play the game, you'll start. You'll get faster and you'll mine quicker and you'll you'll get to the point where it's not as expensive. So I can't obviously purchase this right now because I only have two point nine billion um, bucks. 
Okay. All right, so here is your project tree. Down here, you've got a plus to zoom in. And when you first start out, you, I mean, I, I keep it here pretty much all the time. But after a little while, you're going to get to the point where you're going to be zooming out pretty far. And I have um, unlocked all the way over to this point, telescope 17. And that one is, I have not unlocked it. And I have not unlocked this one. I also have not unlocked, I believe, Nope, that's not it. Um, this one. I have not unlocked this one. And I've unlocked everything else all the way across here until I think this guy right here. I don't think I've done this one yet. I have done this one though. Okay, so, and I've been playing the game since February and I have purchased all of the all of the ships and so I've progressed faster than somebody obviously who hasn't spent any money which is okay I don't think you have to spend money in this game to do well and a lot of people don't spend money in the game and they still enjoy it and you can still be satisfied about how you're doing it is not a pay to win if you are wanting to be at the very top rank one and platinum you'll probably want to spend money even in the top few ranks or you'll spend a couple years two or three years playing to get up there um, and I've seen people say, yeah, but then those people who started before me, they'll still be playing. Not necessarily people get burned out on games, games and they stop playing after a while. They just stop playing. And so you're not going to be competing against every person who's ever played the game because every person who's ever played the game is not playing currently. Okay, your project tree. Um, yeah, so that's what this is right here. You come in, you can unlock um, new planets and... Um, you um, can unlock all these things right here. When you very first start out the game, it's beneficial to unlock a whole bunch of these things because they make the game go faster before you have upgraded these things in here in your mothership very quickly. But after a while, you'll get to a point where your main goal is going to be um, Asteroid Auto Miner. That one's very, very beneficial, very valuable. And then after that, you're going to be working your way across here. I wish so much I could do this without moving the screen. All the way over to your Debris Scanner. Debris Scanner is huge in mid game. You really need to be getting to your debris scanner as quickly as you can. And so when I'm working in a tournament, I ignore a lot of the stuff down here and over here because my goal is to get, um, I mean this one right here, I like to do this one, decrease ingredients required. And I like to do this one and this one because they make things go a little bit faster too. But my goal is to unlock all the way up to the third telescope and to get over to auto asteroids and over to the debris scanner as quickly as I possibly can. In order to do that, to get to debris scanner, you do need to unlock planets um, because they're going to be dropping stuff that you'll be wanting to use. So <clears throat> um, when I upgrade planets, I upgrade in stages of five and I upgrade all the way up to 16 and then I take this up to 31 and I do that for all of them. Oops, I forgot to put in a uh, manager. I haven't talked about managers yet, so we'll do that in just a bit. And um, I upgrade like this just to make sure that they are all getting even representation and even uh, mining and taking across. And you guys will notice, those of you guys who are just new to the game, I don't upgrade. I've already told you I don't upgrade these two equally because they're basically the same thing. And this one right here is the most important. You don't want... You don't want to have your planet have a whole bunch of stuff that's not being taken off your planet because that actually affects the value of your asteroids that land. And the asteroids are hugely important later on in game and even on early on in game. You want them to be very valuable. And so you want to be mining everything off of your planet as quickly as possible. That does not mean this needs to be level 16 this le or level 31 and level 31. Keep them lower. The reason I do 31, 16, and 16 is because once I start assigning managers, um, my... Um, Sorry, go away, go away. Holy cow, there we go. Once I started assigning managers, then it's mining way, 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 way faster than that. And um, like, actually, like this dude right here. See how much he's building up every, every time he comes out. Um, let's see. So that's the project tree, uh, upgrading all the planets and everything. And then you come over here and here's managers. Managers are really, really important. And when I first started the game, gosh, guys, I went by who was the happiest. I picked the managers who were the happiest. So that's why I've got Nate up here and Aled or Aled, Aled, I don't know how you say his name. 
Jill was one that I would not have chosen in the beginning because look, look how unhappy Jill is. Jill is not happy. I want managers who are happy. And so I don't, I did not, would not have chosen Jill. Nancy is one of my earlier managers. She's happy. I like happy managers, except you don't want to upgrade according to who is the happiest. You want to upgrade according to their skill. And the most important in the very beginning and all across the whole board is always to go for managers who have a high mine rate. Okay. That is the first most important thing. Ignore, do not upgrade uh, any manager who does not have mine rate listed first. So you're going to come down here. Look, um, my level one manager is a mine rate, right? And then I've got, this is a troubling, this is going to be fun. I've got four managers here who are all mine rate. And look at that, the bottom three Mine rate is their first skill, and the second skill is mine rate. Those are going to be super powerful for me once I get to late game, end game. I'm not there yet. I am still focusing on the two other qualities that I'll talk about in just a minute. So I have not upgraded any of these guys because these guys are valuable. They're hard to come around. And so once I get a whole bunch of other three-star managers, then I will choose one of them to upgrade at a time. And by upgrading, you you come here. So you need to have four in order to upgrade. It's called promoting. Sorry. So you're going to long press and you hit promote and then you will select the ones that you want to promote. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to. So, um, cause I don't want to lose my good managers anyway. And you want, you do want to upgrade them because once you upgrade them from level one to level two to level three, you unlock that secondary skill and that secondary skill is super important. Now the one, the secondary skills that you want to pay attention to when you are first starting out, um, smelt speed is going to be important followed by cargo. And then very, very quickly after you've been playing for a little bit, cargo will become more important than smelt speed and cargo will be important for you for a while. So, uh, mid game cargo is important because it takes so long to get over to debris scanner. And because it takes a long time for these, these, let me show you. So I've been playing for a while. And so you'll look at this. Uh, if I remember right, like there was a time when these took like 10 minutes or something like that. And they're a lot faster now. Like, look at that two minutes, 25 seconds, two minutes and 55 seconds. It used to be like 10 minutes and then 12 minutes, right? Something like that. And so it would take forever to get anywhere. But as I've upgraded my rooms in the mothership, as I've gotten better managers and as I've used them with all craft speed and, um, smelt speed, I don't have very many smelt speed ones. Um, Anyway, things have gotten much faster. So don't promote managers unless they have mine rate first. Ignore their faces. Like if they're not smiling, <laughs> if you're like me, I like happy people, okay? Um, I'm a happy person. I'm drawn to happy people. Most people are like happy people, right? Uh, anyway, so you're going to upgrade them if they're mine and then upgrade them if they have smelt speed um, and upgrade if they have craft speed quickly. Craft speed's more important than smelt speed. And then once you get to end game, you're going to be going for mine rate and all mine rate because in the end of the game, the most important thing for you to do is to mine as quickly as possible because everything else is going to be like split splickety fast, you know, let's see what else is there about managers. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else. Oh yes, there is. So slots right here, you, I have, um, nine slots open available right now. And obviously, you know, I'm, I've been messing around and so I've been moving things around a lot, but you want to have as many slots open as you have good managers. So I only have nine slots open because I've got, I've got, um, 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 sorry, I've got I, I, I don't open past let planet seven very often. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven good managers to go on one per planet. And so I don't technically need to have nine slots open because I rarely go past planet seven unless I'm in a tournament, in which case it's beneficial. But at that point, like my next several plant, my next several managers aren't really great managers. It's not until I get down into my three star managers. And so you want to make sure you've got a slot open for every really good manager you have. And so, um, I've got six or seven really good managers. I've got nine slots. And so, you know, I've kind of overshot that a little bit, but 
you can, um, to get better managers, um, sorry, I'm moving on to the next topic right here. Recruiting a managers, don't do it right here. I see so many people say, isn't it good? Isn't it good? No, it's not good. It's such a waste of dark matter. Remember what I said? Dark matter is the main currency of the game. It's this thing right here. It's how you get boosts, which I'll talk about next. And it's how you get managers. You do not want to waste your dark manager rec um, recruiting a lower level manager you don't want to read. Yeah. You don't want to waste dark matter re recruiting a lower level manager because the, it's just not worth it. Spend 500 because you can get a five, a four to five star manager. And that saves you so much dark manager in the long haul. Like if you're spending 50 dark manager to get four one stars, that's, um, that's what 200, um, dark matter, dark matter when you could have waited and had, you know, got 300 more dark matter, matter and bought a four star or even a five star manager, which would have taken a ton. I'm not going to do the math live. You guys can sit down, figure out the math uh, a ton because it takes three managers to upgrade, to promote one manager. And you have to do that every single star level. And so by the time you, you buy a 500 dark matter manager, you would have spent a ton of dark matter on the lower ones. So spend it only on this one. Don't do it on this one. Okay. Anyway, so that's that's what's important about managers. Don't spend your dark manager, that matter on anything other than this right here. And sometimes I do spend it on boosts, but not as much anymore. I used to in the beginning, but not as much. And um, yeah, and then up, and then make sure you're promoting good managers. Okay, so boosts. Sorry, I spent a lot of time on that. Boosts are right here. Boosts are very, 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 very beneficial when you're in a tournament. They're hugely. I don't use my boosts for anything now other than tournaments. I used to spend them on challenges, but I don't care as much about challenges anymore because um, challenges are something I once I get to like a hundred billion, I'm not likely. Or actually, I get up to one Q now. Um, I'm not likely to get up to the next level. And so I don't spend my boosts on challenges very often. Sometimes I do. Okay. Boosts will, they make the game go faster so you can boost a planet. And when you want the, sorry, when you're going to pick a planet, you're going to come over here, you go to ores. Oops, I forgot to do this. So you're going to come in here and you're going to look at this number right here, which one is getting you the most money. You want it to ideally be your highest planet, but sometimes you don't have the money, this money up here to upgrade your highest, your highest ore. And so when you're first starting out or even mid game or whatever, you come in here and you look, that's 144 per second, 60 per second, 52 per second, 91 per second, 48 per second, 33 per second. These, um, okay, look at this. Oh, I didn't talk about stars yet. Okay. Um, silver is a very valuable ore for me because I've got lots of stars on it. You get stars from challenges. You get stars from tournaments. Stars are randomly assigned to anything that you may have unlocked when it comes to planets, alloys, and items. So that's another reason why you don't want to unlock too quickly in the beginning. Um, unlock planets and things like that because those stars will go off to things that you might not touch again for a while. Um, eventually you'll get to the point where any star anywhere is valuable, but mostly on later items. And so I don't, I don't worry too much now about unlocking things because I'm at the point now where I'm getting to those items. Okay. So the reason why silver is so valuable, even though I've only got a couple planets with it, what do I have? Let's see. I have one, two, I have two planets doing it. It's because it's got nine stars on it. I wish so much that this, that the game would just go like that. Look at that. It just, it covers that bottom one. Drives me nuts. Anyway, so you get stars every time you do a challenge and every time you do a tournament, the star gets assigned to an, an or an alloy or an item that you have unlocked at any point in the game. And then it gives you a boost on the thing that you've unlocked. And so therefore my silver here is valuable. It's the most valuable item, even though I've got my best managers on my lead. So when you're doing a boost, you come in here, you see which ore is getting the best value, the best bang for your buck. And then you're going to pick the planet. So when you come over here, look at this planet. This one's got 624 per second. And this one's got 207 per second. So you're going to want to boost this one because it is mining your most valuable ore at the fastest speed. So you come in here, you do this, and then you pick that planet. I'm not going to do it right now. And better yet, you're going to want to assign your best manager to that planet before you start mining it. And look at this. See, this is why I'm telling you later on. Um, this is not going to be fast enough because you're going to have man managers that are so good at what they do that you aren't able to mine everything off that planet. And so I will have to come in and 
um, occasionally. Let's see. Yep, it's still building up. Come in here and... Okay, it's starting to drop now. So come in here and, and upgrade those as well. Anyway, okay, so that's the Planet Boost. It What it does is it gives you faster money faster. <laughs> okay. Then the next boost is a cash windfall. That one comes and it's like... It's kind of like when you watch an ad, it's it's kind of similar to that. It's just going to give you a bunch of money. And it's based on the current value of your of your galaxy. Production boost, it it boosts your smelters and your crafters. So this is your smelter. This is your crafter. And um, I hate, by the way, I absolutely hate seeing this be, um, be zero, my ore. It drives me nuts. Um, sorry, my um, alloy be zero. But, you know, I could I could fix that. We can come in here and fix it by going like this. There we go. And that'll quickly get it up to speed. Um, anyway, so it makes this go way, way, way fast, the smelting and the crafting, which is really awesome. And um, you're going to want to make sure you have enough ore for your smelters to pull from. Um, that's very beneficial. Then time warp jumps ahead by one hour. Before you do a time warp, you're going to want to make sure your smelts and your crafts are in a place where they're not going to drain each other. So for example, um, so if I did a time warp right now, it would be wasteful because I, I'm not building my iron bars fast enough to make it worth it. So see how long there's how long of a wait there is compared to this, where I have enough coming in to supplement this. And so it's not going to be a waste of my my boost there, my time warp boost. And this one right here is going to be a complete waste because I'm not doing any of the silicon. Now, let me tell you a trick that you're going to want to use in tournaments. Don't use it just for regular guys. Use use your boosts in tournaments and challenges. Don't, don't waste them on just regular play. Come in here and you do a planet boost and then you do a production boost. You make sure that you are, you've got enough ore coming in. Don't have this turned off if you're mining silver or if you're making silver alloys and um, make sure that you've got somebody building silver. So we'll come in here. We'll make sure I've got a bunch of pe people building silver. And then I could um, be making sure that I'm doing, um, you know, that I'm doing uh, something that has silver being used. Okay. So once you've got everything lined up so that nothing is going to be de depleting too much too quickly, you've got your panic boost, you've got your production boost, then hit your time warp. The time warp will take these things across the entire hour and that is huge for tournaments that's huge for challenges it just really really makes things awesome so it would act as if you've been doing a planet boost and a production boost for that entire hour that's a really really awesome thing to do anyway so so those are the boosts and i've already talked about the mothership um let me show you i'm going to go ahead and sell my galaxy just so you guys can see what it looks like from the start um, I am mid game. And so things go a lot faster now than they did when I was first playing. So, and then I come over here, I do this, then I come and I unlock managers. I come over and I start selling my iron. I come back here, I assign my managers and then I upgrade these guys up to the 31. <clears throat> come over here, unlock that. I open this up and assign that manager. Oh, the X guys, sorry. So annoying. My recording thing gets in the way. Then I come over here, upgrade this all the way. And then once that's done, I come and I start doing this and start making sure that this is selling. Then that's about ready. This one will be ready in a couple seconds. And then I upgrade these guys. I assign a manager. Oh, gosh, I hate that. I can't get out of it. Um, Upgrade these guys, assign managers, upgrade this guy, or I'm sorry, unlock this guy, assign him a manager. And this is just how I do the game. Oh gosh, that's so annoying. Okay, and then I can I could go and upgrade those a little bit more, but I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and um, do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade these guys all the way up. See, I can't do that quite yet. Upgrade this all the way. And so that's pretty much how I do it. And then I keep this and see, I've already up to 13.9. Took me current galaxy um, a minute and a half to get there. So things are going much faster now. Uh, it used to take me about 20 minutes to get to this point. And uh, before that, it was a couple hours. Anyway, so that's pretty much everything for the beginner um, guide for this. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them below. If you have any comments on what I've done, um, those of you guys who've been around for a while, you'll you'll recognize that I have 
I mean, for my last video, things have changed significantly. Oh, oh, I forgot about the beacon. Dag Nabbit. Okay, so I did, I talked about, um, oh, I didn't talk about that either. Okay, so this is the beacon. This is something that gets unlocked after you've been going for a little while. And um, you're going to want to do the same thing with this as you did with your managers. Put everything to mining as much as possible. I did end up unlocking the other things because I get to a point where my planets are being up there. They're being they're being mined too much and I'm not able to unlock those those ores from those planets and fast enough and so I did I have put some of the beacon stuff to them tokens or whatever um and then there's also the stats up here so galaxy you can come up here you can see your stats like how many asteroids have I mined and how many and what 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 was the stuff that got mined and then debris how much debris have I mined debris is huge um, and I did promise you I would talk about colonization. I'll talk about that right now. Colonization is this thing right here. And I don't, um, I don't actually colonize. I still don't colonize. And the reason for that is because it is so expensive when you first start out the game. It is so, so expensive. Let me show you guys what colonization does. I don't even understand why they put it that close to the in the project tree, but it's just not useful. I barely, okay, so I'll just tell you this right now. I don't think colonization is worth it until you have gotten to the debris. I just unlocked it just so you guys can see what it is. I don't believe it's worth it until you've gotten to the debris scanner. And after that point, I don't think it's worth it until you have a lot of your earlier stuff in your resources, um, um, have them filled up by things because you come in here and you can colonize. So let's go ahead and colonize these. And what that does, and I always pick mining again, is it increases the things that are being mined. And in the beginning, look at that. It requires so much resources and those resources are better spent going to something else. And so I don't believe it's worth it to colonize in the beginning. You're better off waiting. And of course, you don't get to use your daily tasks if you don't. But you're better off holding off on that until you've gotten to the point where you can unlock your debris um, scanner and you get a whole ton of items. So the debris scanner, what it does is it brings in in these these random items here so your um your asteroid that come and land here it brings in ores sometimes and once you've upgraded to um this point right here it'll start bringing in alloys and then after that once you get to the debris scanner right here it will um give you items and the items are really that's a really valuable and an important part of the game at that point so so colonization is not worth it until you are able to, um, until you're able to get items. And sorry, that's my five-year-old screaming in the background. Um, he's being a pill. Anyway, so don't do it until you get your debris scanner unlocked because it's just, it uses so many of the resources that you could be better, could be better spent going to unlocking things in your project tree. My heavens, this is much longer of a video than I expected it to be. I'm so sorry about that. I hope it's been helpful. Go ahead and comment. If you have questions, let me know down below and anybody else who's more experienced than me, go ahead and comment as well, as well. And let me know if I missed anything in here and hit the like and the subscribe button and the bell icon to be alerted to future videos. And that's pretty much it for today. I will talk to you all later. Bye.